okay, okay. All right, so in lieu of uh, best movies of 1996, because of uh, Richard Donner's passing this past week, we're doing our tribute to Richard Donner, top five Richard Donner directed films. Yes. So uh, <laughs> you sounded pretty excited there. Well, the, the only thing why I wasn't like too excited was because we've done most of these movies already. Yeah, well, there's a few we haven't really talked about. So, yeah. but yeah, a couple we have. So, uh, yeah, he directed some great movies. And I think some of them were actually very influential, um, especially for the time that came out. So, so who wants to go first? Uh, I'll go first. All right. I think you went first last time. Yeah. So my number five is Maverick. That's also my number five. Is it really? Yeah. Al Gibson, Jodie Foster. Uh, Maverick, to, to me, had uh, it, it was special because uh, I grew up watching the Maverick TV series. Ah, yeah. James yeah. Garner, who plays uh, in the movie as well. Yeah, yeah he did. But uh, uh, not the uh, Maverick character. They right. Seem to every time they do a remake, they get somebody from the the old movie and stuff like that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I used to watch the series with my mom when I was uh, you know pretty young. It was one of her uh, favorite movies. Yeah. So, uh, so when uh, this movie came out, it was like special for me. Yeah, and it was a really fun movie. Uh, you know, I'm sure it captured a lot of the original show. Uh, yeah, that, that same feeling type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Maverick is a, is, a, is a gambler, but he's also a con artist. Right. And uh, they threw Jody Foster in, who is a gambler and a con artist. <laughs> and a con artist, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so they're both vying for the same prize. Right. The, a riverboat. So yeah. most of the movie is, you know, Gardner trying to get the, the money, a Maverick rather, trying to get uh, the money uh, mm -hmm. to get into the game. Yeah, and uh, it is fun to see James Gardner. I never saw the original show, but he's always great. Uh, you know, even in his elder years, some of his, the roles like The Notebook even, he was great in that. So, um, but there's also a really fun scene where there's like a bank robbery and the two robbers one of them they have bandanas on but one of them is Corey feldman and the other is danny glover and it's so fun because him and mel gibson kind of look at each other weird on purpose in that yeah. scene it's uh, classic so we'll let you know why later on yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> all right cool so yeah same number five so what's your number four uh, my number four is Scrooge. Ah, that's higher on my list, of I course. It would be higher on your list. Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad you have it, though. I'm, I'm kind of surprised you do, in a way. I know yeah. it's not your favorite version of A Christmas Carol. <laughs> <laughs> We've had this debate before. Uh, I actually put it on my Christmas list now to watch for, at Christmas time. Yeah. Well, Bill, Bill Murray makes the whole movie. I mean, uh, it's a whole different thing than Alistair Sims. You can't really compare it. He's had a lot of he had a lot of help in the movie too. But yeah, I mean, they let Murray go bananas in this movie. It was like, uh, yeah, it was definitely a a Bill Murray movie. Oh yeah, and also his brothers are both in it. One of them playing his brother, uh, I think it's John Murray, the younger one, and then Brian Doyle Murray uh, plays his father when they do the flashback scenes, and then um, Karen Al Allen from Raiders playing uh, his girlfriend, right. who was great, and uh, they had really good chemistry in the movie too, like with her calling him lumpy and all that. And, yeah. and, uh, 
And then the ending speech uh, gets me every time. Like I actually get choked up when I see him. Like you can tell he's getting really choked up when he's uh, talking to the camera at the end and saying what the Christmas spirit is all about. Yeah, and his boss was funny too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Forsyth? Is that who plays that Ow. boss? I can't think of his name offhand. Yeah. But, yeah, he was a big star in the in the old days in the movies and stuff. Right, yeah. He was, he was funny. Yeah, a lot of great side characters. Of yeah. course, the ghosts of Christmas past uh, are all great. Uh, what's her name? Carol... Um, not Carol King, but the, the the one that plays the fairy that hits him with the toaster yeah, and all that. Shit out of him and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, classic, man. I mean, many, many, many great scenes. And then, you know, close, you know it was, the whole thing was basically was they were it was making a musical of Dickens' mm. classic, right, A Christmas Carol. Yeah, yeah. Now, d just the opening scene where they they have all these fake commercials for TV shows on the IBC network right. are so great. And then, where, where his boss wanted to make uh, a network for cats. Yeah, <laughs> they could watch TV. Yeah, was... uh, there's so many little things like, and then him being such a jerk, wanting to staple antlers onto the little field mice and yeah. stuff. Yeah, you had that that look that meanness streak, like yeah. you know, had you know yeah. in, in the actual uh, Alistair. Yeah, they yeah they modernized it basically in a, a pretty cool way. Yeah. All right, so uh, my number four is probably higher on your list, and it is Superman. <laughs> yes, it is higher on my list. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we already talked about this. Uh, was it 1978 when it came out? I think that was the year that yeah. it was on our top five episode for that one. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it was advertised as, uh, the, you know, hip, hip, the Superman really flying, that you would see that he right. be really flying. You yeah. know, it's, uh, the old Superman... Uh, George Reeves on the TV series. I mean, all he did was like he he did a jump and he appeared. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then he just had his hands holding out like this. Yeah. Well, right. He, yeah. Well, you never saw the rest of his body. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, this like actually looked like he was flying. Yeah, the green screen technology. I mean, this was one of those things that I mentioned earlier that. Uh, you know, it kind of revolutionized the way for superhero movies would be done and um, was pretty ahead of its time in that regard. And it did, it still holds up pretty well today. Um, and then, of course, Christopher Reeve, I think, was the best Superman still uh, of all time. And then uh, all the side well, actors. Not the only movie that he was ever good at. Yeah, I... I you know, I, I haven't really seen that many Christopher Reeve movies outside of Superman, honestly. He, he always had that, like, grin on his face. Yeah, right. And it was through every movie that he did. And so it made the other movies look, you yeah. know, a little ridiculous. Because He's he, kind of typecast in a way, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Gene Hackman, of course, was great as Lex Luthor as well. Yeah, I mean... He he added like uh, the comedy to the movie, even yeah. though he wasn't really known for comedy at that time. Right, and yeah. his sidekick, uh, played by Ned Beatty, was great too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the casting was perfect. I can't remember the actress's name that plays Lois Lane, but she was great, and you know, feisty, and uh, the romance, the chemistry that they had was really good. Ah, uh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and then, oh, you even had uh, Marlon Brando as Jarrell. Jarrell, his father, yeah. Yep. So not bad casting. Of course, the movie is a little long, and it, it kind of feels like it takes a while to get going, but they set up the character really well by doing that, I think. Uh, you know, even with uh, Superman 2, it was a perfect continuation of the movie. Yeah. Really? 
talk about Superman three. Yeah. Didn't direct it anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that Superman's uh, took a turn downhill after two was good though. Yeah, two was good. Uh, and and the villains were uh, were good in in Superman two as well. Yeah, well but, they were uh, basically the same villains. Well, they had or the that trio. What's a uh, General Zod and uh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, okay, cool. So what is your what are we up to now? Uh, number three. Uh, yeah. Yeah, what's your three? Superman is my three. Oh, okay. So what's your three? My three is the Goonies. <laughs> it didn't make your list? No, the Goonies did make my list, but I can't believe you had that at three. Yeah. And you had Scrooge at number one. Is that my guess? Is that what? Is that true? It's it's very possible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Goonies is probably his best movie. Well, yeah, that's arguable, but uh, yeah, I know we're already going to your back. So now I'm guessing that's your number one, possibly. Yes, it's definitely my number one. Oh, okay, all right. Well, uh, yeah, and Scrooge is my number one. Okay. So, <laughs> we gave it away, but yeah, the Goonies is great. Uh, especially, you know, I see it as a kid movie. I saw it when I was a kid and it was one of those that, uh, Mikey and Kimmy and I would act out the whole movie. Like we knew all the lines. I always wanted to play mouth, the Corey Feldman character when we acted it out, everyone had their favorite character, you know, uh, Mikey would play Mikey, of course, of course. uh, which made sense. Cause he even had the inhaler. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah all the kid characters are great the adults uh the fratellis uh, there you go <laughs> uh sloth of course uh -huh. is awesome and uh yeah a great adventure movie it was a little coming of age movie too yeah you know uh the, the kissing scene the accidental kissing scene actually right yeah, getting uh, a taste of uh, life a little later on, and it's cool to see where some of these actors ended up. Of course, Sean Astin being Sam from Lord of the Rings, right? Uh, Josh Brolin went on to do like a million movies. Uh, as it, there was a long time period, and then you know, as an adult, he's in No Country for Old Men and uh, whatever Thanos and the Avengers, all that stuff. So pretty cool. And then, um, yeah, it was just a really fun movie from yeah, start I mean, to finish. It's a, it's a cool adventure movie, basically. Right. So it, it's kids or, you know, adults, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. I, mean, I, I took it as a, a movie for, you know, all ages. Yeah. I believe, yeah, I saw it in the theater multiple times yeah. as a kid because I thought it was the coolest. And then I think... Uh, when Mikey and Kimmy and I used to do our little treasure hunt things that we would make up, it was probably also inspired by that as well. Yeah, and yeah. I've, I've shown it to the grandkids and stuff like that, so I still enjoy it as an adult. Yeah, one-eyed Willie. Maybe I'm just a kid at heart. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. No, and you can you can also feel like the influence of Spielberg who produced the movie. Yes. And um, yeah, just a really cool one. Okay, so, yeah. so our number two. Amblin films, yeah, right. touch to it. Yep. I, oh, I also have to mention the music from the movie is really good uh not just the like the upbeat car chase part in the beginning but also it gives you like this sense of wonder like when they're searching for the treasure and stuff that music that comes in and out it's yeah. really good so uh so our number two is probably the same then i'm guessing yes i only i did it a little differently okay i i, I did it as a combination of uh all the lethal, lethal Weapon movies into one. I see. So, yeah, he did direct all four of them, right? Yes, he did. 
so well, I just went with my. I think he only directed the first, right? Oh, okay. Well, I just went with my favorite of them, which was Lethal Weapon 2. Right, and you probably did that because of the introduction of a new character into the series. Leo Getz. Leo Getz, yes. One of the best characters of all time. Yes. Uh, just him saying, okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Now <laughs> Never go to a drive-in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why don't they, you go to a drive-in? <laughs> <laughs> so classic. Never get your food, uh, food for a drive to Never. I fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so classic, man. That scene is great. And then also the scene um, where he and Danny Glover staged the thing at the, uh, the consulate during apartheid. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and he's... They're laughing afterwards, explaining how the South African guy talked, and he goes, "But, but, but, you're blick," <laughs> <laughs> and they're just all cracking up. There's so much great comedy, even Joe Pesci aside. Uh, just the you know the relationship, the chemistry of Glover and uh, Mel Gibson is great. I mean, the first movie was was a big hit. Yeah, so, and the thing is when. Donner did the second one. Uh, he didn't want to make it as serious as the first one. So he told the writer to put more comedy into the movie. Right. But that, yeah. That's what makes the second one. It's lighter. The first one was darker. Sure, yeah. The second one does have its dark moments, though, like when he finds out that, you know, these guys were the ones that uh, killed his wife. Right. And then, he, oh man, I love it when he just, you know, he goes nuts at the end and he's just out for Braveheart style revenge, <laughs> <laughs> as only Gibson can do when he pulls the house on stilts down with his truck. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and then at the end, not to give away like the way he kills the, the guy, but it's, it's fantastic. So uh, one of those great action slash comedy movies that the 80s did so well like beverly hills cop and like that whole genre of uh die hard as well fits the mold and then in the third one they brought in uh, renee russo right character and they kept uh, leo gets in there also. yeah leo gets is the so, best man yeah. So she added another dimension to the movie. Right. Uh, this was probably the first uh, uh, cop buddy movies. Yeah. And uh, came out. It was later imitated with uh, a couple of more things yeah. because of its uh, success. Yeah, exactly. Again, you know, Richard Donner, uh, some people may not, not think of him as an innovator, but I mean, for that genre, Lethal Weapon, definitely, and Superman as well. And The Goonies to an extent. I mean, there were so many movies that came out after The Goonies, like Explorers, we mentioned before, and all these, you know, kid adventure movies. So um, very good. So my honorable mention was the first Lethal Weapon. Okay. So, uh, so that'll be, I guess we can just use Lethal Weapon 2 as our go-to uh, for the list, since it is probably the best of all four of them. Uh, what is your honorable mention, though? Lady Hawk. Ah, I knew it. I thought you were going to have it on your top five. I had to, no, I couldn't put it in the top five. There were, there were so many uh, better movies. But again, yeah. this was, I showed this to uh, the grandson again just recently. Yeah. Uh, I guess like a week ago or two weeks ago. And yeah. I still love this movie. Yeah, I mean, it has its moments, but I th I, there's parts that, I, I don't know if boring is the right word, but uh, it can be a little slow. Well, it is because, uh, you know, it's, it's basically uh, Broderick in the beginning, you know, escaping from the jail and meeting up with the yeah. hour of the night. And then, that part is fun, yeah. And then, and then it's like you're slowly finding out mm -hmm. what the, the thing is between 
him and the hawk that he's always carrying. Right, right. You know? And then, uh, and then you're learning what it is as Broderick is learning. You know, yeah. this is. mysterious lady of the night, Michelle yeah. Pfeiffer. Yeah, this lady of the night. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you know, eventually find out about the curse. It's you know, it's a it's good, a cute story. Yeah. Yeah, fantasy. You know, type movie. Yes. I was talking. Good. I'm a sucker for those things. Yeah, yeah. I watch some really horrible fantasy movies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember uh, Legend with Tom Cruise? Uh, that was terrible. Yeah, that was terrible. Legend, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we watched it because Tom Cruise was in it. And it just, like, turned out it was stuff. Yeah. Was it's amazing that didn't end up ruining his career because I think it came out, like, right before Top Gun or something. Right. But, um, but anyway... That- other movies that he did too was The Omen. Yeah. It was, good. It was a horror movie. Oh, right. Yeah, it actually, that spawned like many sequels and uh, a mm-hmm. lot of remakes. Yeah, yeah. You know, since that came out and stuff. Uh, Inside Moves, uh-huh. Radio Flyer. Uh, and one of my other favorites, Conspiracy Theory. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Donner directed that. Yeah. Oh, Gibson and Julia Roberts. That yeah. would have been my number six if I didn't put Lady Walk in. Right, right. Well, obviously, yeah, based on our list, he was really in his prime in the 80s. Right. But um, like 89, man, Scrooge and Lethal Weapon 2 came out in the same year. We have one, one other thing to uh, say. Mm hmm. Was the uh, the reason that uh, he gave Danny Glover, Bill Gibson gave uh, Danny Glover that look in Maverick, was because of the uh, Lethal Weapon movies that they were in. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Well, cool. Well, this this will be interesting to put together now. So. I'm thinking we got to put uh, Goonies at one because it was your one and my three. Thank God. <laughs> now, okay, so hold on. I guess we got, so we'll, go, we'll put Lethal Weapon 2 at two because it was both our twos. But then we got to put Scrooge at three because it was my one and your four. Which like does that. have an average Superman. below of two. So then, yeah, Superman. Wait, what What number was your Superman? Three, right? It was three. Yeah, and it was my four. So, yeah, Superman at four. And then Maverick at five. That's easy. Yeah, that was easy. Okay. So, yeah, it's, uh, we, we essentially had the same top five. <laughs> yeah, we, basically, we did. That's in a different order. Yep. Okay. That, that damn screw just interfered. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, let's read off our uh, three and four's favorite Richard Donner movies. Here we go. At number five, Maverick. At number four, Superman. At number three, Scrooged. At number two, Lethal Weapon 2. And at number one, The Goonies. Yeah. yeah. Good list. A good list. Yeah, I mean, he was a really good director, so. Yeah, not a bad resume there, I must say. So, uh, all right, so next week we will be back to 1996. Yeah, I mean, these movies are generational. I mean, people yeah. from one generation to the next. Indeed. Yep, I could see uh, having a, a day of, of watching all those movies. <laughs> It would take all day, when, including Superman, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, or, and if you did all of the lethal weapons. That's true. Just that alone. They wanted yeah. to do it five, but they decided against it, which is yeah. probably a really good idea. Yeah. How, how many characters can you introduce at that point? So, yeah. All right. Well, I'll see you on the next one and uh, love you. Yeah, so we're back to 96, right? Yes, sir. All right. (laughs) All right, I love you. You too. All right, bye.